My home park is Six Flags Grand America. I've had the opportunity to visit the park many times. I've gotten a pretty good feel of all the rides and I'm confident on where I rank them. In this video, I'll be ranking the roller coasters of Six Flags Great America by the element. You won't see a coaster twice on this list, and I'm going to exclude the family and kitty coasters. Starting off the list, I have the backwards spike on vertical velocity. This ride as a whole is a guilty pleasure of mine. I just have a soft spot for it. Many people claim the holding brake makes it better, so if it were added, I wouldn't be surprised if this element would be higher up on this list. The first spike is great, but the ride is just better in the back row. Because on the backward spike, you're shot up nearly 200 feet with extreme positives. And then, you get some good weightlessness at the top. I'm genuinely surprised some people don't talk about this ride in element. And if you know me, you know I have a soft spot for forgotten coasters. Next is American Eagle's Surprise Ejector Hill. This hill takes place on the red side after the helix. The helix provides increasingly powerful laterals, but then you exit the structure with a jarring drop that always surprises you. I think it's similar to the ejector death hill, which gets a lot of praise in this community. Both have powerful sharp pops of ejector, but the one on American Eagle seems to be forgotten. Most people hype up the first run of speed hills and the iconic helix but forget some of the other outstanding moments. And people sleep on the first drop in the back row too. The airtime on that element is wonderful as well. Overall, it's a great ride. Number eight is Viper's Double Down. Whether you think it's overrated or underrated, you have to admit this element is the best on the ride and one of the best in the park. The ride as a whole focuses on floater airtime but this element is an exception. It attempts to remove you from the seat on the last dip. It's straight ejector, and you don't expect it on your first ride, unless you've experienced one of these on other coasters. At seven is Batman the Ride in its vertical loops. Whether the first or the second, they're both powerful. It's a must to experience this in the back row. You hug the ground with extreme positives after getting whipped over the top. I think because they're so compact, that's what makes them so intense. I actually prefer them to the ones on Montu and Raptor, but those two are great too. I had a struggle picking this element or the corkscrews, but this is more of a sustained force, so I think that's why it's better. Six is an underrated and underappreciated element. I know, I say this a lot, but this element is truly forgotten and deserves more praise. X Flight's first drop is the prime example. It's not that tall, especially compared to Gatekeeper and its massive wing over drop, but this one does the trick. Insane hang time at the top, crazy whip down in the back, and powerful positives exiting. It's a great start to the ride and deserves to be talked about a little bit more. Demon's first drop is the same, but in fact, I hear not one thing about it. Literally, extreme ejector in the back row. It's not at the crest of the hill either, but rather halfway down. It's kind of like if you combine Magnum XL200 at Cedar Points Drop with Maverick. As a matter of fact, I think I like to keep a secret because I love hearing people surprised by that airtime moment. Aerodynamics hosts many powerful airtime moments in their coasters, and it's no secret. Staying on track with extreme forces, Superman's pretzel loop attempts to rip your face off, not because of airtime or the hang time of X-Flight, but rather the positive. In the back, you get whipped down, and it feels similar to those beyond vertical drops, but instead of sitting down, you go from flying below the track to on your back. It's known that these inversions are the best out there, and I thought the same up until I rode another roller coaster in Florida. Number three is Goliath at Six Flags Great America's Zero-G Stall. Yet again, another inversion. 
this one is hang time focused. It was the first of its kind and on a wooden roller coaster too. Probably the most impressive inversion. Just as groundbreaking as Hades 360s. Yes, pun intended. But the inversion has really good whip going into it in the front and exiting it in the back. I wouldn't call it overrated or underrated. The height for the element is appropriate. If you haven't experienced one of these, I think you'll have to add it to the top of your bucket list. That speed hill is also a great element. It's really hard to choose when every element hits hard. I think a lot of people know about this one, but Raging Bull's drop comes in at number two. This is my favorite airtime moment on any b and Back row is the way to go. You can't do any other row. It must be back. Usually there's a decent wait for that row, but every cycle is worth it. It's that much better. And it's crazy because you feel like you're going to get launched from over 200 feet in the air. There's not a sensation on a roller coaster I could compare it to. You just gotta experience it for yourself. Number one is Max Horse's launch. The ride is commonly broken, but when it decides to open, make this a must do. Front row provides something unparalleled. There's no countdown, so on the first few rides, this comes unexpected. It's got so much power. I wouldn't change a single thing about this element. The only thing I would change would be making it more sustained. But honestly, I don't know if I would want to because I think it would ruin the power of the element. And the ride as a whole is a powerhouse too. I just wish it was a bit longer because it's so good. There's no correct way to rank the roller coasters or elements of this park. Everyone's opinions seem to be different, so tell me your favorite element in the park. Or if you haven't been here, Tell me which ones you're looking forward to the most. Thank you for watching.